Hello and welcome. I am the space pirate Dr. Shipwrex, and with the release of EVE Online's new free-to-play alpha clone state, I thought I'd put together a few quick tips that I wish somebody had told me when I was getting started. So sit down, strap yourself in, and lube up those ear holes, because I'm about to penetrate them with some knowledge. The default overview settings are not something you should keep using. Look into the Sarashawa overview pack, or get an upgraded one from someone in your corporation. Well, it's not vital that you do this immediately, you will want to do it. Join the in-game chat channel, Sarashawa Overview, like so, and follow the instructions. So many things in this game, like the overview settings, can be customized in so many ways. Example, I only recently found out that you can customize the point at which your ship screams in pain to remind you it's dying. Amazing! The star map is a very powerful tool. Yours might look a little different because I'm using the old map, but either way you can use the options in this box, which sometimes hides here, to customize what information your map displays. Someday soon you're going to want to know things like how populated your neighborhood is, or where there's a big fight. The map can tell you these things and many more. Keyboard shortcuts make life faster and easier. Some of my favorites are F to make drones attack, Shift R to recall them, Control Space to stop your ship, and Control F9 to enter cool cinematic mode. You can find the shortcuts through the in-game settings menu, but I would advise you to visit EVE University's wiki page linked in the description below because it's easier to look at and you can Control F to search for things. There are trade hubs and you should use them. Just ignore local chat because it is full of scammers who want to prey on new pilots like you. Anyone promising to double your isk does not mean you well. It doesn't matter how closely you read their bio, they are scum fucks, and they are out to burn you. Sometimes they'll post contracts that look good but actually cost you something instead of paying and, uh... You basically just should never trust anyone in local chat and a trade hub. Alt plus R brings up your regional trade menu and that's all you need. It is advisable to carry a travel fitting in your cargo hold if you leave high security space. Usually this consists of a few inertial stabilizers and or warp core stabilizers. Inertial stabilizers make your ship align faster and thus enter warp faster. And for each warp core stabilizer you fit, an enemy will be required to apply one more point of scramble to your ship in order to hold you down. This means that if you fly, for example, a Magnate and fill your low slots with four of these, an enemy would have to apply five points of scramble, which is unusual, otherwise you could just warp away. In my early days, I performed exploration with a ship like this, and as a new player, it was very profitable. The loot from one good relic or data site would pay for the T1 ship many times over, and hacking is really fun. I absolutely suggest this as a way to make a bit of cash while learning some valuable lessons. Speaking of learning valuable lessons, let's talk about gate camps. Once you leave high sec, you'll find that space is full of murderous f***ers like myself. One of the most common ways for a new player to die is to get caught in a gate camp. It is exactly what it sounds like. One or more players sit on a gate and wait to ambush someone like you when they come through into the system. These come in a few basic flavors. In low security space, you will probably encounter small gangs or smart bomb camps. Small gangs will try to lock onto your ship and scramble your warp drive upon entering system. If you have a small ship and enough inertial stabilizers, you will probably get into warp faster than they can lock you. Probably. If you do get locked, try to burn back to the gate you came out of. If they have used offensive modules on you, they will not be allowed to follow. You may also encounter smart bombing campers. These are usually larger ships that activate an area of effect damage module on a gate where they expect players exiting the system to land. For a smaller ship, this means death. The best way to avoid this is to warp to something else before you warp to a gate so that you come out of warp from a different direction. Players who frequently travel through bottleneck systems will often have tactical bookmarks above gates for this purpose. Null security gate camps are mostly the same, but with the addition of warp disruption bubbles. Warp disruption bubbles are fields of concentrated cancer that prevent your ship from warping while inside their area of effect. They can also cause your ship to come out of warp in places other than where you intended. More information about these can be found in the description below. Your best defense against them is to never warp directly from gate to gate. 
Should you enter a system and spawn inside a bubble, it is generally advisable to burn back to the gate as fast as possible and find a new route. There are other ways, but unfortunately an alpha clone will not have access to cloaking technology, so if someone sees you trying to burn out of that bubble, you're probably going to die. But don't worry, you'll get used to that. If you use a stasis webifier on something to slow it down, you will reduce the amount of time that it takes for that thing to enter warp. This is why you should always put your warp drive scrambler onto your hotbar before your stasis webifier. Now that you know some of the basics, you should join a corporation. You start the game as a member of an NPC corporation, but those are pretty useless. If you're brand new to the game, I suggest applying to Brave Newbies or Pandemic Horde. With a corporation comes a vast network of support and instruction, as well as plenty of group content that you will not find anywhere else as a solo pilot. Most corporations have a ship replacement program, SRP for short, and anything you're going to be flying as an alpha clone will be inconsequential for your corporation to replace. There is, however, a downside to joining a corporation. There are other corporations who may declare war on yours. The most notable consequence of this is that enemies may attack you with impunity in high security space, usually at trade hubs. However, most major corporations operate out of low and null sec, where that could have happened anyway, and your new home system will usually be well enough supplied that you don't need to go to high sec for anything. You could, however, install a jump clone in a high sec station to get back and forth if you wanted. Alpha clones get access to one jump clone, and that could be handy. Your corporation's bookmarks will also be a valuable asset. These usually include tactical perches on gates to avoid bubbles and smart bombs, as well as safe undock bookmarks. Safe undock bookmarks are important because they allow your ship to enter warp immediately after exiting a station, and therefore escaping potential danger. Be advised that it is best to create and use your own personal undock bookmarks so that you can avoid any enemies who may be cunning enough to get their hands on the corporation undock locations. Once you are comfortable with EVE Online, you may want to step up your game and fly better ships or make more money. Although the free-to-play alpha clones will not be able to use Tech 2 modules or battleships, it is worth knowing that if you pay for a subscription long enough to train the requisite skills, you can participate in incursion fleets, which will net you enough ISK in a day or two to buy a Plex and extend your subscription for a full month. The Valhalla Project and Warp to Me are well-known incursion running groups, if you duplex your account or pay CCP for a subscription, which honestly is probably easier, you'll gain access to my favorite group of modules, cloaking devices. At that point, you'll want to look up the micro warp drive cloak trick and covert ops cloaks, but that's a story for another day. Also, if you have any burning questions that you just need the answer to right f***ing now, you can access the in-game help channel by doing what I'm showing you on screen. This is how you access any chat channel, and it will be useful for you later. Well, I hope this video helped you out some. If you've got any questions that Google or the in-game help channel can't answer, feel free to submit those in the comments section down below. I do try and keep up on that. Until next time, this video was brought to you by the hardworking delivery agents of Wingspan Delivery Services, or one of them anyway. And, uh, hey, hey, who else sponsored this video? Nobody. Oh. Oh, f*** me.